And as and always, we're going to start from our main simulation tab. And basically, all you already know how those parameters works. Okay. And with the fire, if you want to create this stuff, we need to get a little bit more, um, a little bit less temperature diffusion. In our case, again, if you look at our temperature from our smoke object, go here, we can see that we have a lot of diffusion on the side. And when we create a fire, I want to create a more like um, contrast, a bigger contrast between the high dense and low dense areas, or between the high temperature and low temperature areas. So I would decrease it like my 0.25, or even maybe even two times smaller, like 0.125. Now we can see that we have a nice contrast transition. There is not a big blurry area around our fire. Let's get back to our multi field. That's what we have for now. Maybe I want to increase a little bit of the division size here to have result more quicker. Yeah, I should find maybe like 35. And I think I want to do here is go to gas resize fluid dynamic and maybe use max bound minus Y. I will keep to avoid any, um, I don't want to, uh, make container going down. So it's like a ground and yeah, it's not looking like fire for now. It's looking like a big mushroom, but you already see something going on here. And let's go ahead with the cooling rate. So now cooling rate will uh, can, can create the bigger and smaller flames. In our case, uh, I will keep this setting setting here by default 0.75. Maybe when we can play with some flame height or something like this, I can reduce or increase this amount with the buoyancy here lift. Definitely I want to decrease it maybe two times smaller. I don't want to have such huge rising for my fire. So now it's looking a little bit more interesting. And again, it's looking like a smoke, but orange smoke. As you uh, remember from our lessons, uh, from our smoke lesson, we have almost the same result, just like, like over this, right? Right. So to get a nice shape for my fire, I should go to my combustion model. And that's what we disable when we work with the smoke. And that's what we want to have if you work with the fire. So with an ignition temperature, what does it mean? Well, enable combustion, as you understand, we can turn off or turn on creating the fire. So this model works or not without this checkbox. It wasn't work. And the first parameter is ignition temperature. Well, it's pretty simple parameter. If our voxels have temperature bigger than 0.1, and as you can understand here, if you look on our temperature again, with the temperature data here, oh, come on, temperature. So, almost all areas except of just around those. You can see a difference. Yeah. Almost all areas have a temperature bigger than 0.1. So this means that we need to have not very high temperature for ignition. All right. This means that almost all fuel will be ignited with this setup. Sometimes if you want to ignite all fuel without an exception, we can type here a zero or even the negative values. The negative values mean that we will burn, uh, we will ignite all fuel we have with 100%, right? Sometimes it can be useful for something like um, explosion or something like that when you want to create a very fast ignition with all our fuel. But after that, we have a burn rate parameter and the burn rate parameter allow us to understand how many fuel we will burn per second. So by default, we can see that 0.9, it's mean that 
we will burn just 90% of all fuel for a second. So actually 10% of fuel we will keep. We will not ignite this fuel. All right, so it doesn't matter which temperature setup here we have, but with the burn rate allow us to define how many fuel we're gonna burn out. And again, if you want to burn out all fuel, I don't like to use one here. I saw in some lessons, guides, and manuals that um, we we is a better do not use the maximum values. So sometimes if you want to have a burn rate very very high, press just 0.99 like here, and that should works fine. Okay, not use just one. So in our case, I will keep it 0.9 as the default and the fuel efficiency. And the fuel efficiency is set as how much of burned fuel is actually not burned. All right, so when we use a burn rate, okay, is actually a parameter which set us how many uh, information from the fuel field we sent to the burn field. That's why I said that our burn field is a little bit different from our field because of our burn rate. Okay, if you set here burn rate 999 and here we can set like minus one to add all my fuel uh, to ignition is in this setting uh, should have a um, situation where our fuel field will transfer to burn field like 100%, okay? But with the default settings, not all information from our fuel will go to the burn. And then some, some guy think that those two parameters is the same. So how many we will burn and how many we will keep. But with the fuel efficiency, we're talking about uh, burned fuel in fact, that fuel which is going already go to the burn rate, okay? So fuel efficiency is show us how many burned fuel is actually not burned. It will keep. So if you say zero, it means that all burned fuel, fuel was will be removed from our fuel field. And if you say one, it means that our no any fuel will be removed from our fuel field. Okay, when it's burning. So that's like, you know, two different parameters doing the same, like an opposite, opposite action. How many we will burn and how many we will keep. Well, for my fire, I guess I will increase a little bit of fuel efficiency. I don't want to burn out all my fuel for now. And the temperature output is how many temperature we will create uh, with this burning process. So basically, in our source, we already have a temperature, okay? But when we create um, an ignition, we need to increase this temperature from the fire. So in fact, it's how, how many uh, information from our burning we will send into the temperature field. All right, so I don't want to increase it too much, like 0.15, okay? When we use a smoke simulation, we have a temperature for advection of our smoke, and this temperature, will uh, we will head just over here on the source. And then when this temperature is rising up and begin to cooler and cooler, and the temperature begin to smaller and smaller. And with it, with the combustion model, we will add some values to our temperature field from the burning, all right? And how many temperature we will send there, that's how we use the temperature output parameter. And the gas released is filled, it's not a field, sorry, is parameter, in fact, uh, which is create like um, uh, expansion. So uh, when, when our fuel is burning, it creates some like an expansion. It's, is um, create like a blow outwards, all right? And it's like a gas, um, 
gas pressure or something like that when we create this very important parameter when we create explosion because when we have an ignition of very explosible elements they create a very high pressure and our um, simulation is just shrink up and begin to expand very fast so that's how we can play with the gas release parameter for creating a nice explosion but in our case, I don't want to do a lot of expansion. So let's keep just five, maybe three times smaller. And now that's what we have for our fire. Basically not too many changes here. And it's not a huge, we don't have a huge influence from this parameters over here because, well, you know, expansion may be lower. Yes, we don't have a very expanded areas here near our uh, fuel source. So what I want to do else, let's go to our tabs here. So this is our like main combustion settings. And now we can work with all other stages separately. So we can work with the flames, with the smoke, with the gas temperature and the fuel. Well, mainly gas and temperature is not very useful not too many time i work with like a flame contribution or burn contribution here or working with the flame contribution more contribution inside of temperature so the main parameters we can find on the flame and the smoke so if you don't want to use the smoke you can just turn off emit smoke and that's how we will create just in fire all right without any smoke there is no density field if you look on our simulation how temperature burn, division pressure, heat, fuel, velocity, no density. If we turn this on, we will create density from the heat field. So as you can see that our source is a heat field. Now we can see the density over here. So what is important is how many density we will create, how many smoke we will create. By default, we can control how many, how dense our smoke will be. And um, uh, if we have inside of each box a huge amount of smoke, like maybe one here, so we will not put there more smoke, okay? We can control this amount. But if you want to create a density smoke, it means that it doesn't matter how many smoke we already have in this voxel, we will put more and more smoke add uh, there. And there's now we can see that we have a lot of smoke. So create dense smoke. Again, sometimes could be useful with an explosions because there is, we need to have a lot of smoke and this smoke should be a very dense to create a nice shader and transition between the fire and the smoke. And mainly, yeah, we will use the heat or you can use the burn area. It's up to you, but mainly I use a heat area. So the smoke amount, how many information we will transfer from our heat to the smoke so again we can control the amount of smoke created by the heat field it's very important uh, it's very simple so just like a multiplier for this and we have the heat cutoff and blend amount so basically heat cutoff show us the um, uh, the value of heat field should have to to create a smoke okay so if the heat cutoff is like 0.2 for in, in our case by default the smoke will appear whereas the heat field have a value 0.2 or smaller all right and we have a blend amount it's like a transition it's uh, create nice soft transition between the heat and the smoke okay so you can leave this thing by default again uh, or in this case, if I want to play with the fire just without smoke, I can remove the smoke amount to zero and it's going to be almost the same like disable the image smoke. But with this, we uh, you can see that we don't have a field density. So it should be the same. If you put zero here or we disable our emit smoke here, it should be the same. So it's up to you. You can see the density field is not created. You can go ahead and here again we don't have a density and with the flames well flames is actually our heat field all right but we have some parameter like a flame height allow us to control the bigger or smaller flame i want to see here it's not like in meters or centimeters it's not used by any units it's just like i don't know like a multiplier all right 
So the, if you see that our flame or your flame is very big, your flame is very big, you can reduce this setting to like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and it begin, it should be a little bit smaller. So it's like cool down our fire a little bit more. So it's like a cooling rate, a little bit bigger. Okay. So now our flame is smaller. You can see it. Okay. That's fine. So for now our fire is, well, not, it doesn't have a good shape like a fire. Okay. Sometimes you have a wispy smoke with very uh, soft shape. But when we talk about fire, a soft shape we have just on a few uh, scenes like, I don't know, like a candle fire. Yeah, we have just like a um, small shape without any turbulence, without any, um, you know, big amount of different flames. So in just a few examples, mainly when we have a fire from, I don't know, from campfire, from the trees, the buildings, huge areas, there is a lot of details, a lot of small and big flames. So we now we need to separate um, our uh, source on the different areas with a bigger or smaller temperature, with a bigger or smaller amount of fuel. So that's why um, till I go to the shape, working with disturbance, shredding and sharpening, I want to play a little bit with, with the source. But just a few uh, words about the flames. So we have the flame height and we have the cooling field. So basically, uh, what we what setup we apply to our um, actually what parameters we apply to our coolant field to the temperature we um, you can see that this cooling field this cooling field <coughs> controls um, the value the values in the given field so by default is temperature but you can set any field to one in fact and they use it to vary the flame's cooling rate across the container, as you can see here. It's almost the same what I said, yeah. <laughs> so you can control this field range from 1 to 0, when you can put like 2, and then you will apply this cooling field to the range from 1 to 2. And you can see this remap, how we apply it, how we apply this cool field. All right, so now let's get back to my source. Go here. Let's set my height as an object. And let's add a noise here. So the attribute noise should work fine for us. And as with the density, go to fuel. Shouldn't be 1D because we work with the um, fluid fields, the temperature and the fluid, uh, and the fuel is our fluid fields. And I'm gonna use the additive mode. And yeah, it should be animated. And I want to work with some interesting f uh, noises like a whirly cellular is sometimes good for our fire. So there's not too many changes here. You can see if we go to Disable, there is something. But I want to reduce minimum to one and maximum to zero. And what I want to do, why I'm using the minimum one and maximum zero. I want to go to my power source and I want to reduce my scale and the fuel and the temperature to zero. So with this setup, we can see that there is nothing here. And actually, that's why, because there is just zeros in our attributes. And now when I'm using noise and using the additive mode, I just add some values between zero and one to my attributes. Okay, so now they will have a, a range between very small areas closer to zero and very high areas to closer to one for the temperature and for the small, uh, sorry, for the fuel. So all what I want to do here is just working with duration, with the pulse duration, which is allow me to define the speed 
and let me just decrease the speed i don't want to have very fast some noise and i definitely need to decrease the element size to like 0.25 i guess yeah that should work fine because you know there's not too many objects where we have a very very constant areas with ignition or with the same uh, fuel amount if you talk about oil maybe because it's almost the same temperature in all surfaces but when we talk about I don't know, like a wood or coal um, we can see on references that not all um, surfaces of the um, wood or um, I should probably say logs have the same temperature and the same uh, flames they just I call this the flame dancing our flame is dancing on the surface of our fuel so the same setup I have here so I create a nice and uh, very contrast noise it's very contrast it, it has a very low density areas and very high density areas all right, so I do need to enable my minimum because this method allow me is doesn't create uh, smaller than zero values. So we can like press hit, but it doesn't change anything for now. And with this setup, even without any kind of shape, just press escape to avoid calculation. We can see the difference between our last simulation and now. So now we can see that our flame is dramatically smaller. And the reason for that is because we lose a big amount of fuel. And the less fuel we have, the less flame we're going to have as a result. So the, our heat field will be smaller. As a result, we're going to have less temperature, less fire, or less flame height. So I will increase this flame height as it was by default to 3. So now it's looking like more like it should be, but again, it's a very static. So not too many turbulence, not too many sharpening or something like that, but it's looking like a fire. But before I go ahead, I just want to play a little bit. Oh, where's my source? And what I want to do is maybe increase the number of particles so point two maybe and the particle scale maybe lower no 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 well it should be fine okay maybe even more like 15 0.95, maybe like this. Okay. So increase like 0.3. Okay, 0.02. I just want to find like a gold medal between the speed and the quality. Because if I then I have a very low quality, I won't see I won't see the changes inside my shape. So maybe increase the fuel amount here, type two. So I multiply my fuel field, yeah. Well yeah, that's what I want to get. That's what I want to get here. That's my fire. You can see that there are some problems with the sub steps, but now in case it does too many, doesn't create too many um, bad steps. So cooling rate I will increase to 0.85. And again, the bigger cooling rate, the smaller fire I'm gonna have here. And yeah, it should be fine. So it's not visually very good and interesting or actually what I can do is set to my bottom scatter. Now I will see a difference. 
because that was like an just a surface. Now I will ignite the whole volume from my sphere. This should be a little bit interesting again. Yeah, that's what I want to get. But it's too many again. So it's just like playing with attributes and playing with parameters. And each scene, you need to play with those settings. So yeah, maybe like this. The fire should be fine. So, okay, now let's go and find out how we can increase the amount of details on our fire, on our flames using the shape tab.